Good morning, everyone. This is Brother Dial from Fleming Island, Florida. I want to greet you once again today uh, in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're thanking Him and praising Him and loving Him for all that He's done for us. And He has done uh, above all that we could ask or think uh, in this day. Uh, he's come on the scene. He's fulfilled His Word. Uh, he's called us out. Uh, he gives us direction. He gives us a, a purpose. Uh, we're part of the plan uh, for this last day that we're in. And uh, so we, we know that we're uh, ending as far as the world's history that uh, there was a time limit on it, and uh, it's just just about up. But thank God that there's a people that are no longer time beings because they have become eternal beings. That means they never had a beginning. They never will have an end. They're just as eternal as God is. But we're here uh, for, for one purpose and and that one purpose is is to fulfill the word for our day i can't go back uh, in other any other day and fulfill that i can only fulfill what god has for us this day and our word for this day is to once again prophesy what was in the open book that John had was told to eat it up, that he must prophesy again. So that's our, our mission, that's our commission, and that's what it's all about. So you say, well, uh, why would it even make a difference? Because God wanted it to. He wanted it to be a witness to the world what he had done, what he had accomplished. And uh, when we all finish this up and we're getting, we can uh, maybe talk and ask questions, we can find out the whole complete story. But now, our part is, is just to prophesy again what was in the open book. And so we had uh, a messenger come and the messenger was going to be God's spokesman to uh, this age. And uh, he was speaking to the, to the whole world, but there was only people that had an ear to hear what the Spirit was saying through him. And it's been that way all down through the age. So we thank the Lord this morning that we do have an ear to hear. And so with that hearing, we can see and understand what God has uh, been doing and what He is doing now. So we just thank the Lord and praise Him that we're part of this. So it makes no difference how, how big, how little, whatever. No difference for that. Somebody put a little saying up the other day. They said, you know, it don't make no difference about how many followers you got because they said, said Hitler had millions and Jesus had 12. And you see the difference. So, and, and we know that we're not talking to the majority. We're talking, really, we're talking to a small minority that will be able to uh, believe and receive this, but we actually we're talking to this whole uh, Christian world because they would be the only one that would even make a difference. The rest of them, they're out anyway. But so it goes everywhere and it will not return void, but it will accomplish whatsoever God has for it. So. Uh, we thank God that we're just part of it. Let's pray. 
Lord, we thank you again today. Lord, it's, it's a great day, and it is a wonderful day, Lord, that we can look into the Word. We can look into your Bible, and we can see, Lord, how uh, the Word has been fulfilled, how it's come off the page, how it's become how it's become the living word by being fulfilled in human flesh, Lord. And Lord, we believe we are that living word, the word, the word that would be living in this day, the word made flesh. And, and it, is, it is Jesus Christ in flesh, Lord. So that's what it's all about. And we thank you, Lord, that you've done that for us and we're here to manifest and bring forth the word for our day. Lord, we're going we're gonna to be a living word. We're going to be a walking word. We're going to be a talking word. And Lord, the only way that we can do that is through Christ. And Lord, we pray that you'll once again help us this morning. Be with us. And most of all, that you would get glory to yourself. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now today... <clears throat> I want to take a subject and just to give this uh, a title, a name, I want to call it Behold a White Horse. Behold a White Horse. And so I've, I've chosen to read out of Revelations uh, 19 and I want to start well, I think I'm going I'm to start with verse 11 and go down to verse 16. And then we want to add a couple more to that. So let's, if you've got your Bibles, you want to read along, you can turn over to Revelation 19 and verse number 11. <clears throat> and let's read. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness doeth, doeth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, as he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. <clears throat> and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress, the winepress of the, fear, of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And Lord, may you add your blessings to your word. Now, you can see where the, uh, the title come from. Behold a white horse. And and it said, He, not, not, not they, He that sat upon this horse. And it gives a description of this one. And it comes on, on down. And He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And His name is called the Word of God. And then, so He's not only the one that's coming, but there's... There's people that's coming with him. And because this here, John is seeing this uh, happen in heaven because it said, I saw heaven opened. And of course, we know that John, he was on the Isle of Patmos as he was writing this. And the, the book of Revelation is a book of symbols. So all these, these symbols mean, mean something and uh, thank the Lord that God had a way to break them open to us. And then 
And the armies were, which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. So behold a white horse and we got he, which is Christ. He's on a white horse and now we've got the armies of heaven and they're on white horses. And now, this gives us a clue. It said, and they were clothed in fine linen, clean and white. Now, let's just back up just a couple of verses here in Revelations 19 and we'll get a clue who these armies were and how they were dressed. Now in Revelation 19 and 7 it goes like this the marriage of the Lamb and remember Christ is the Lamb and the marriage of the Lamb because the Lamb is just a, a symbol of Christ the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife, uh-oh, his wife. Well, something has happened during this time. Because now, it's not just the bride, but now it says, His wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. Uh oh, well, that's what the armies were arrayed in over here in uh, Revelations uh, what, 14. The armies which were heaven were clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Yes. So now, so they're clothed just like she is. So ev evidently, the armies must be her. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. So it's the saints. It's the wife. It's the ones that are, that are part of Christ. It's the ones that went into heaven and now they're coming back from heaven and they've got a, and they've got a they've got a job to do. And it says, out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Out of his mouth goes a, when and that sharp sword is a is a symbol of the word of God. Out of his mouth, and now we know what his mouth is. His mouth is his prophet, his spokesperson. Because that's how he is going to speak on the earth. He said, I will do nothing until I raise him up a prophet and I'll give him the secret. I'll give him my word and he will speak in my stead. And he did. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword with that he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth, and he treadeth the wine press, the wine press, and the fierceness. And when did he do this? When did he tread this wine? When he went to Calvary, he went there, and he actually, he said, the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God was taken out on Jesus Christ instead of us. He paid the price once and for all. It don't have to be paid again, but what you have to do, you have to accept what he done. And you can see if what he had to go through was what God required for sin, there's, there's no other way and I don't care if, if a thousand men died. I don't care if 10,000 died. It wouldn't make a bit of difference because there was only one that had no sin that became sin for us. Not because of himself, but for us. And actually what it was, it was God coming down as a man because he was the only one that could do it to pay 
the price of his own law. Now you think about that. And it was part of his plan that he would do that. It wasn't like he'd come down here and he was all, well, you know, uh, who's going to do this? That was part of the plan because it had been already written. So, here we got this white horse coming. And here we got the armies of heaven coming and we come to find out that the armies of heaven is his wife is his is his body and how did they get in heaven because they were raptured into heaven but now it's time to come back and to do something for God because he said his army so that means there's going to be some kind of a battle going on and what is, what is the battle all about? It's, it's between Christ and the Antichrist. Because here he is coming and he's got written and his name is called the Word of God. So he's coming the Word of God. And so there's going to be another one that's going to be an anti-word. And you see that from, from Genesis all the way through. Now, I want to. I was looking into the the first seal that was in the uh, seven seal book, and that's where I'm going to take some statements here uh, to get us uh, started. And so I might have to run through this kind of kind of quick, but we'll see what we can do here. Now. I want to read out of the first seal that says, because remember, the first seal was all about a white horse rider. And we come to find out that the one they thought was Christ, because everybody was looking for him to come on a white horse, but he wasn't coming on the white horse in the first seal. That was, that was just church era and they, they they held on that for almost two thousand years no so let's read here in the first seal notice now the holy spirit and the revelation and christ is the holy spirit is christ in another form oh my because the holy spirit is christ but they're still looking for the man of 2,000 years ago. But here is, it's Christ, and he's the Holy Spirit just in another form. That's right. Notice, it is the Lamb that opened the book. And go back over in Revelation 6, and you can read that. It's the Lamb. Well, the Lamb is Christ. And it is the Lamb that opened the book, and the Lamb is Christ, and Christ is not seen anymore from then. So here we see Christ, but he said he's not seen anymore from then. Well, right here in the, in the first seal, but he is seen in the book of Revelations, the 19th chapter coming on a white horse. And he said, if you'd like to read it, go to Revelation 19, where we just read here. So, he's not seen anymore until Revelation 19, where we just read, where we saw heavens open and a white horse. Now, let's go on with this first seal. And Jesus, his name on earth was Redeemer. Jesus, when he was on earth, he was a redeemer. That's true. But when he conquered death and hell and overcome them and ascended on high, he received a new name. Now, so when after this time, now he's conquered and he's ascended on high, Brother Ram said he gets a new name. And he puts this in. He said, 
That's the reason they holler the way they do and don't get nothing. Well, he said that's the reason they holler. So he's not talking about his group. It's somebody outside. That's the way they holler and the way they do and don't get nothing. Now listen, it'll be revealed in the thunder, see? It will be revealed in the thunder, see? And what, what the people don't realize that as Brother Branham is preaching the, the seven seals, he is revealing the thunders. Because he said that's what the seals was all about was revealing the thunders. Remember, he said, don't write it, John. Seal it up. And he did. And he just gave it a bunch of symbols. So he said, that's the reason they holler and don't get nothing. It'll be revealed in the thunder, see? Okay, here he is. He's preaching the seals, revealing the thunders, and the people just reading right along, and they don't even catch what he's saying. Now, let's read a little bit more. <clears throat> Notice the mystery, and when I see that, my ear goes up. My senses come alive because he's fixing to say something. Because that's his job is to reveal the very mystery of God, to reveal the mysteries. Now notice the mystery he's coming, writing. There's got to be something to, ch to change this church. You know that. Well, what's going to be something that can change the church? When they get a hold of the pure Word of God, that's going to change them. Because they're not going to be a part of a mixed up something with a little bit of creed, a little bit of tradition, this, that, and the other. That worked in some other age, but it ain't going to work in this age. You know that. There's got to be something notice. No man knowed his, no man knowed but he himself. Now, notice, no man know but what? Know what? That whoever that name was. And notice, Christ is not seen anymore, see, from the time, but he is on a white horse. So if this guy is riding a white horse, we're at the guy there in uh, the sixth chapter, the first seal. That's the one that's riding the white horse. The one that's got a bow and no arrow, and he's going out uh, conquering to conquer. The one that they thought was Christ all along. Note if, if this guy's riding a white horse, he's only an impersonator of Christ. And look here. Now, they don't have one impersonator. We've got... <laughs> We've got many impersonators. And what are they? They're anti-Christ. Because, look here, this is today when we're supposed to have the full, complete Word of God, nothing mixed, pure, unadulterated Word. And here, here they're coming around claiming that they've got Christ and ain't got everything in the world mixed with it. You know, we just passed Christmas, and people, they get, they get all shook up about Christmas. Well, just, they say, well, it's all about the birth of Christ. Okay, it's all about the birth of Christ, but he was not born in December. How would you like for you to be born in April, and then they wait until December and celebrate your birthday with a pagan god somewhere. Would you think that would be right? No, you'd probably kick up a storm about it. You'd say, that ain't my birthday. Well, it's not Christ's birthday either. 
but they claim it is and they carry on with it. Hmm. Now. So, here, <laughs> that's one of the biggest impersonations. Here it is. He's only an impersonator of Christ. See, get that. Now, notice the rider on the white horse didn't have any name. Look here. Revelation 6, 1, when he went out, it just, a, what's that, a white horse went out. And he didn't have any name. He might use two or three titles, but he hasn't got any name. Now listen, but Christ has a name. Okay, he's just told us. His name on earth was Redeemer, but when he overcome and ascended on high, he gets a new name. But Christ has a name, and we're talking about a mystery here, but Christ has a name. What is it? The Word of God. So his new name is the Word of God. And people say, what? That's his new name? Well, that's what the prophet said it was. Now, you can, you can debate and fuss and argue and you can do all you want to. It don't make a bit of difference. That's what he said. And he is the mouthpiece of God. But Christ has a name. What is it? The Word of God. That's what it is. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and it was made flesh. And the Word is still made flesh in the believer's flesh. That's the only place it can be made flesh because he can't use an unbeliever to manifest his Word. So, he said it, it'll be revealed in the thunders. Well, here it is. He revealed it right here. And the people, they read, they read, they read right past that. And it never even occurs to them. They're just reading like this is some, some storybook or something. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. But you have to have the Spirit of Christ. That's the only way that you can recognize the Word is to have the Spirit of Christ and it will direct you to the Word. Not to the creed or some church tradition or this, that, and the other. It only directs to the Word. So behold a white horse. A white horse. And he's got, he's got a new name, the Word of God. And the armies of heaven followed him on white horses. And we're going to check out that white horse and kind of see what's going on here. Now, this is a, a little statement out of the, the breach between the seven church ages and the seven seals. He said, oh, I tell you, that's when the denomination and doubts fall to the ground. Everything keeps still. When the king speaks, this is the king. That's his word. How is he coming? The word of God? He's he, what, king of kings and lord of lords. King word. King theophany. King Jesus. King of kings. I want to hit this one more time. God's provided place of worship there in Los Angeles, 1965. But the hour is come, not going to come, the hour is come that every kingdom has to give away because there is a kingdom of God that's established in the human heart by the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the presence of Jesus Christ and Christ will come to his bride and set up a kingdom here on earth and it will never be diminished. How do you get into this kingdom? You are born into it. How do you know? You just keep, how would you be belong to a kingdom and disagree with the king? 
So you wouldn't, and the king is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and it was made flesh. So, all these people claiming that they're in the kingdom, and how would you be in the kingdom and disagree with the king, and the king is the word? Well, how does the word come? It comes by a prophet. And the people, they, they read the Bible. They say, oh, well, you know, uh, 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 I believe the Bible. And they, they absolutely do, but they've got a denominational, created up, antichrist interpretation of it. What Jesus said, in vain do you worship me. Teaching for the commandments, the tradition and doctrine of men. Huh. Because what they had, the, they had the Bible, they had the scrolls, they knew all about it. Because remember when the, they asked, "Well, where is Christ to be born?" Well, it wasn't. He said, "Tell them God to go look that up." Well, they went over and come out. Oh, he's going to be born over there in Bethlehem. Okay. He was. But did they believe it? No. <laughs> Some little peasant group over having a baby. What's that got to do with anything? When Christ comes, he's going to come down here uh, to, the, to the temple grounds and a uh, 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 golden staircase will come out of heaven. He'll walk out and say, Hello, okay, Ephesus, I have arrived. Well, that, that's what they thought. But, you know... And that's where people miss him all, miss who? God, the Word. They miss him all the time because he does it in such unusual ways. And when it, they dismiss it. So, so you, you, you say, well, I, I, I'm in the kingdom. The kingdom's of me. And the king is the Word. And you're disagreeing with the Word. So let me know that you're in some kind of delusion. Now, now, so we sing this song, the king, they used to sing, the king is coming. Well, I got news, the king has come, and the king is the word. And that's what, message. every time you say that Jesus has come, they go, whoa, wait a minute. Can't help if you can't if you can't see what God has done in this day, no more than they could see two thousand years ago. But He did, and He did this day, just like He said He would come. Behold, a white horse. Now, I'm going to read some statements here out of the the message, and knoweth it not. And that's a, that's a, that's a, because he was taking this from uh, Revelation. Knoweth thou not that thou art poor, wretched, blind, miserable, and don't even know it. And so, and knoweth it not, there in Jeffersonville, 1965, he's going, to, he's going to tell about some dreams that the people have come to him with. And every one of them <clears throat> is about this white horse rider. And, and these dreams are so real that they feel so impressed to come and tell Brother Brown about it. Now, and so this is, we're going to break in on a, this brother here telling his dream to Brother Brown. And this is a know of it not. And said, a, a voice that shook the whole earth and said, The earth shook from under my feet. And said, After it quit shaking, I heard a voice. And said, Brother Brown, it was your voice. And I know there was something said that said, I'll ride this trail once more. I'll ride this trail once more. So, it, that couldn't have been mean in Brother Branham. I ride this trail once more. It had to be talking about Christ the Word. 
because this was in August of 65, and in December 65, Brother Branham had gone on really this time past the curtain of time. And he said, I only have one time as a mortal to preach. And so this is getting late in the ministry. So it says now, and said, I'll ride this trail, the glory to God. Christ is riding the trail again. What was he bringing on the trail? He was bringing the word. You must prophesy again. And I'll ride this trail once more. And I said, I started looking up at that rock. And it looked like, looked like past the clouds. And way up there standing on a rock that reached from east to west was a pointed shape like that, like a pyramid, run back to the east and said, there you were standing there on a horse. Uh-oh. Now, after all this voice, this quit shaking and everything, here he sees Brother Brown on a horse. He said, I've never seen anything like it in my life. A great white horse, white mane hanging down and said, you were dressed as an Indian chief. And all the things the Indian Jews and said, you had on a breastplate and them bangles and arms and on down like that. And said, you had your hands up like that. And said, the horse was standing there like a military horse. With a, like a prince and said, walking and me still standing and said, you pulled up on the reins and went riding towards the rest, the west. So here, Brother Branham is in this man's dream and all this shaking and the voice and everything else. And the next thing he sees, Brother Branham on this great white horse. Behold, a white horse. Behold, behold. Stop, look, listen. A symbol, a symbol being revealed in this last day because all the mysteries are over to them who can receive. And I said, I looked down and there was a whole lot of scientists and the next morning, that was Saturday, and on the next morning I preached on scientists, you know, a being of the devil, and said, scientists were pouring things in tubes and mixing it, and said, you stopped the horse and raised up your hands again and screamed, I'll ride this trail once more, and said, the whole earth shook, then people shook, and said, they looked up and looked at one another like that, and looked up at you, and they just shrugged their and that's what they've done to this message. That's what they've done. They looked around and said, and went right on, absolutely, and that's what the churches have done. That's what the so-called believers have done. They've got their own interpretation. They've got that old hangover from the church ages. They can't shake it. They, they, they claim that they're in a bright age when they're in nothing but in the, in the Pentecostal Laodicean age. And they claim that's where they're at. And that is where they're at. I was just telling somebody the other day, look here, I was raptured out of Laodicea into the Bride Age and him trying to tell me, no, 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 you're still in love. I said, no, no, you might be, I'm not there. Why would I want to be in the place where it's absolutely dark? But, you know, there's, that's where they choose to be. And quoting quotes, <clears throat> and he said they just shrugged their shoulder and went on and you started going towards the west and when it did I seen this man he called himself a prophet boy I tell you what nowadays there was just one man that called him man we got more prophets than you can shake a stick at Everybody now is a prophet. They're all over the world. There's one over in this country, or two or three in this country, There's one over here, one over there. But here, he only had one. And this time, and he said, 
And when he had seen this man that called himself a prophet, you know, he came up on a horse. But he was riding a horse too. But look, let's, let's check out his horse. He come on a horse that was mixed with white and black together. Uh-oh. Christ is on a snow white horse. This man is on a mixed. He said mixed with white and black together. And said he got up behind this great big horse and said, as it was said, way up above the clouds and the road went over about that wide and said the horse just danced to the wind blowing the feathers and everything on your guard and said, then the horse mane and tail blowing, that great master big white horse, great big master white horse, Horse, behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him, walking right in line, and said, This guy run up behind you, come from towards Canada, and the man lives in Canada, and he said, Come back, and said, You took, he took his little horse, trying to knock your big horse off, turning him around, making his hips hit against and said it never oh glory to God it never moved that big horse he just kept walking and look here all this stuff that they come buffet us with and say that we're crazy and we're wrong and we're out on a limb it never bothered us one bit because we are with the word huh. so it never moved him and then he said all of a sudden you turned around and said that would be the third time you had spoke. But the second time you said, I'll ride and said, you didn't speak like you did. You commanded, said. You turn around and call the man by name and said, get off of here. You know that no man can ride this road without God being ordaining him to do it. Get off of here. And the man turned around and said, the man has wrote letters and said across his horse's hips that black and gray and mixed together said across the horse's hip was his name signature just exactly like on his letter and he rode off towards the north now how about that so here we got this great big white horse that brother Brown is on and here comes Another man that he's claiming to be a prophet and he's on a mixed up colored horse and he never moves the white horse because the white horse is representing the word. This mixed color is a mixed up, created up something that they've come up with but it never moves the true word of God. You say, well, what's all that? Because... It said, Behold a white horse. Behold the horse. And that's a symbol. And so now we see that symbol is coming to life or has come to life. And it's been acted out right here on earth. These are these are dreams are telling us something, what God was doing and what he has done. And all of these things, they have a meaning, and all these symbols have a meaning. And then there's the only way we can know it is when they are broken open by the prophet that knows what the symbol is. Because that's his job, is to reveal the mysteries of God. And then he said, you went on down, that big horse turned around as far away as that we could see, and you stood and raised your hand and said, then he started crying, said, Brother Brown, to see that horse standing there with all that war bonnet and everything like that, and said, that breastplate and everything, and you held up your hands up a little while, and you, said, and you looked down again and picked up the reins and said, I'll ride this trail once more. I'll ride this trail once more. And said the whole earth shook back and forth like that and said there was no more life left in me. I just fell down 
assigned the rock. So that was the one man's dream. And it was all about the white horse. And the white horse, what does the white horse represent? It represents the word. The horse is a power. And he's coming on the power of the word. The power, this day, of the revealed word of Christ. Now, there's another instant about this horse. There's another brother that had a dream and he just feels like he has to come tell Brother Branham about this dream. So he comes and Brother Branham lets him in, him and his wife, to tell this dream. Then he said, uh, the next morning, Junior Jackson, who dreamed about the pyramid, you know, when I went out west, remember that he called me a month or two and he said, now, and he said, I, he was busy, but he said he's going to let him come in and, and tell the dream. And he brought his wife in as a witness, and he said, I dreamed, Brother Ranham, me and my wife was out riding. And I said, I looked back in the east, and I saw us like a spot, like one of those flying saucers. See, the world don't know what that is, you know. You know, it's on... We know what it is, see? We know it's investigating judgment angels, you see? And how the Pentagon and all about it comes down and with the intelligence and how they can. Brother Brown snaps his finger and said, like a flash, they're gone. Pull away from anything they got. They don't realize what it is. He said, see? Let them think whatever they want to. They call it flying saucers or whatever they don't know and said i seen it coming and as i watched and what it was it was a man on a horse and said he was coming with lightning speed and said i seen he was going to come right down in front of me and i stopped my car and jumped out and when i did the horse was standing in the road a great white military horse walking in a prance that's the word of god of course uh oh now he has told us what that white horse is he said that's the word of god of course behold a white horse and there was there was a man sitting on there and he was dressed in western garb wasn't a cowboy, but he looked like a chief over the rangers or something, said. And see, all of his chief authority. And from the west, and the Indians over the Indians, the rangers over, see, and the man had his hat pulled down and was looking sideways and said, when he turned sideways, said, it was you, Brother Branham. And you never talked like you did. You said, Junior, called him three times and said, I'll tell you what to do. And said, then you pulled up on the reins of this horse. You made about three loafs and took to the skies and you were gone towards the west. And he said, just a minute, I looked around and here came a horse smaller than the one, but of the same breed. So, same breed, same word. But smaller and stood and said, walked around and said, well, he must have sent this one back for me. Said, said I, I, I got in it. Junior has done a little riding too. He said, you know, when, when the saddle just fits you and Brother Brown said, the stirrups and everything he said, well, well, this fits me just right. So I pulled up on the reins and off through the skies. Okay, now he's taken towards the skies. And said, I pulled up on the reins and stopped him. Why would, when you're following Brother Branham to where he's going, why would you stop? 
And that's what has happened to the ministry that claimed they're following Brother Brown. They have stopped. And not only stopped, let's read what happened. I pulled up on the reins and stopped, turned around, and went back. Can you imagine? Now this man is telling the prophet this dream and the prophet absolutely knows what it is. So he's just telling him, Brother Brown, I couldn't follow you. I stopped and I went on back. Went back to what? What he had before because he has, he has definitely not following this. Even when it was identified who he was and all about it. I pulled up on the reins and stopped him, turned around and went back. Boy, if that ain't, if that ain't a picture of 2020. They have pulled up on the reins, they have stopped, and they have went back to their old denominational, created up ways. They have left the word. And now all they got is a bunch of mixed up. They're no longer, no longer white. They're all mixed up with all different kind of colors. And you know why that happened. There was a horse that got all mixed up and he became a pale horse. And then that horse got a name and his name was Death. D-E-A-T-H. Now let's continue on here. So I stopped him, turned around and went back. When I went back, I said I stopped and got off the horse. He got off the word because the horse is representing. He said if Brother Brown's horse was the word and this was of the same breed, just smaller, so it was the word and he come back and he gets off the horse, the word, and talk to his wife, and that wife is representing the church because the church is the real wife, and so he goes back, gets off the word, goes back to his church, and carries on with the same old thing that he ever had because now he's got off the word, he's rejected it, he's refused to follow it. Why? Oh, he got on that horse and it started taking off right up to the sky and no doubt he got scared and that's where the people are today they're scared of the revelation of Jesus Christ it scares them to death because it's so unusual to what they think it should be Oh, they got it all figured out. They got it charted out. And they say he's going to come like this and like that and the other. And they're all waiting for it. And they missed the whole thing. Because in 1965, Brother Brown said, We are entering the raptured age. And here we are. Over 50 years later, and according to them, we're still entering. We'll never get to it. Because they have missed it. Just like this one did. Rather than to follow the word, he come back and got, he stopped it, went back, got off the word, went back to his church and carried on with the same old thing. Huh. You know, it was probably back in maybe, no, maybe 19, the early 90s or something. We were going up to uh, Jeffersonville to visit the spoken word, which was spoken word at that time. And this brother said, hey, well, you know, this right over here by uh, the church over here, what was his, what was his name? Junior Jackson, Junior Jackson. We got over there 
to, he said, this is right close to Junior Jackson Church this Wednesday night. You want to go over there? I said, yeah. Because I was still kind of new to the message and so on, and I didn't know much about it. So I said, yeah, well, I see his name all the time in the books. The brother had talking about this, that, and the other. So we, if we got it, was a win. We went there, and they didn't know nothing about Brother Branham. I thought, but that's where we were getting all our information. We asked him, oh, well, do you have any in his books? He said, no, we don't. And I was thinking to myself, what? With all, and all of this and you just paid no attention? Why? Because he went off on his own. He went back. He got off the horse. He got off the word. He went back. And not only him. Now, so, the, the horse is the Word. It was a white horse. And every time on this white horse, it showed, behold, a white horse. And every time it shows Brother Branham as in, like, the chief, the chief of the Indians, the chief of the, the chief authority. Because in the days when the Son of Man shall be revealed, it'll be a Son of Man revealing the Son of Man. The Son of Man is the Word. And it can only be revealed by a prophet. But people seem to forget that. Now, so, I got, when God is doing something for you, don't stop. Keep on moving. Just trust Him. Don't go back to reasonings and everything else. Just trust Him and keep on moving with the Word. Now, this is the fourth seal there in Jeffersonville. He said, when Christ appears here on earth, as this fellow appears, it becomes completely the devil from Antichrist all the way down to false prophet and then to beast, the devil himself, and he's riding on a pale horse, colored all up, mixed with all kinds of color, to make him pale and deathly. See what that other prophet was that was trying to knock him off? He had a mixed up colored horse. So, he said, but when our Lord appears here on earth, he'll be riding a snow white horse. When our Lord appears here on earth, and see, they see that, and they think, well, yeah, evidently Jesus is going to come riding down through the skies on that white horse. And the white horse is the Word. And when he appears, he appears he comes and appears through the ministry of a prophet that he has ordained to be here. And that is just too much for him. Every time you say that, oh, you're making Brother Brown's flesh God. No, we're not. His flesh was no more God than the flesh of Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago was God. God was inside. God was in Christ. God was in Brother Random. God, it's all about God. I'll ride this trail again. <clears throat> so when the Lord appears on earth, he will be riding a snow white horse. And he will be completely, fully Emmanuel, the Word of God, incarnate in a man. Oh, that just tears them up. Well, they can see that the devil's incarnate in a man. Oh yeah, he's got his false prophet. And all of it, and they say, well, yeah, the devil is incarnate. Well, yeah, but when you try to put God incarnate, what? God in flesh. They get all shook up. They well, oh, what are you? I ain't making myself nothing. I just believe what he said. That's what the new birth, the new birth puts Christ inside of you. Not on the outside. I don't have to go up to, to another planet somewhere. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. 
So, he'll be riding on a snow white horse. No wonder they were seeing all these dreams about this white horse. And he will be completely, fully Emmanuel, the Word of God, incarnate in a man. You can see how much difference there is, is in them. Yeah. One's on a white, snow white horse. The other is on a mixed colored pale horse and the prophet give him a name called death because it death is eternal separation from God. And what calls that? Disbelief. Now, still in this fourth seal. Notice the Antichrist was on a pale horse, mixed colored. A horse is a beast that represents a power. His power is all mixed up. Why? It's politics, it's national powers, it's religious power, it's demon power. It's all kind of powers mixed together. A mixed pale horse that he's got all kinds of power. But when Jesus comes, it's on one solid color horse, the Word. But when Jesus comes, he's on the Word. A solid colored horse. Amen? This one mixes its color of red, white, and black. Three colors in one represented in one. Three powers represented in one. A white horse, a black horse, a red has three crowns in one. And here we see life and death come into its final struggle. Uh-oh. Life and death. Look here. What is it? It's between Christ and the Antichrist. He's a perverter of the Word. You say, well, these people, they believe the Bible. Oh, they say they believe the message. Sure, they... How are they going to deceive you if they don't come with a peace? But what do they do? They pervert it. They give you their interpretation of it. And it makes the whole thing of non-effect. And how much of that is going on in the world this day? So life and death is coming to their final struggle. The white horse of true life. The pale horse of mixed creed. Oh, oh my. Pale horse of mixed creed. And I tell you what... The people, they love their creed. Somebody said, asked me if they say, what's wrong with the, these people, with all these traditions and so on? I said, they love their traditions more than they love Christ. That's just that simple. The Christ don't have the preeminence. The tradition has the preeminence. And they try to tie it to Christ and he's not there. So, you see, the thing is coming to a real showdown. Now, I want to say something. You might not believe this, but I looked it up. There's only one original color that's white. How many knows that? There's only one original color. Anything else is mixed. Christ is on a solid, white, unadulterated word from the beginning. Amen? And every color would be white if some chemistry hadn't broken into it. Amen? Glory. Even the church would be standing on the apostolic doctrine of the Word of God and God confirming it if He didn't have creeds and denominations mixed into it. What happened? Started off white. That was the original color. Christ is on a solid, white, unadulterated word from the beginning. And it would have been. But what happened? They mixed. They mixed a little red. They mixed a little <gasps> black. They mixed it all together. And what did they come out with? An anti-Christ. A pale horse of death. 
still on. Uh, you, you say, well, uh, they're riding a the horse. Amen. They're riding a the horse. They're riding the power. But what is it? It's the power of death. So, the church would be standing on the apostolic doctrine of the Word of God and God confirming it. Look here. God can only confirm His Word. He ain't going to confirm your 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 creed or your tradition or this. He, he only confirmed His Word. He said He went with them confirming the Word with signs following. Confirming the Word. Now they'd have to confirm the creed. Now, and remember his saints, uh-oh, and remember his saints are clothed in white robes, not mixed with, oh, glory to God, not mixed with denomination and creeds. Look here, we were wearing white linen, clean and white, the righteousness of the saints. Not mixed with the denomination and creeds. Now we find out these denominations. Here we get your mixed colors. But this is the original color he's writing. The original color on his people and they've been dipped in the blood and cleansed and that garment sent right back yonder, see? And that's what it's all about. Those that mix and turn, uh-oh, for seal, we're talking about Behold a white horse. Behold the Word of God. A new name. His new name is the Word of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And the Word is still flesh and dwelling among us. And those that mix turn pale and go to death. Now this is the outcome of of all these people that take the Bible and they take the message and they, they mix it all together with a little tradition and a little creed. And look here, that's going on all over the world. They claim the prophet and then they take and put their own interpretation to it. And, and they got it to say about anything they want to building themselves a little kingdom. But look here, you ain't got to build a kingdom. God has already got the kingdom. You've got to become a believer and be born into it. And the kingdom is the Word. And turn and they go, they get mixed up and go to death. It is a perverting, perversion to mix colors with white you pervert the original color. Is that right? The original color. Only color is white. And you mix something with it, you pervert its real cause. Amen? Is that right? And if he is the white horse and he is the word, then to mix it with anything that any kind of a... Cre uh oh Mix it with any kind of a creed, add one word, or take one word away from it. It's to pervert the whole thing. And all they got. That's why they holler and scream and don't get nothing. Because all they got is a perverted word. All mixed up. It's no longer white. It's no longer pure. It's no longer unadulterated. And that's, that's what they had all down through the church age. And look here, God winked at that. But look here, the winking is over. This here is the pure, white, unadulterated Word of God. The complete revelation of Jesus Christ and it is on earth and it is in flesh his body is up walking around and he is using that body to manifest himself just as he used that body 2,000 years ago just as he used the prophet's body over 50 years ago he is still using his body and his body is his wife. She is him. 
Now, <clears throat> so if he is the white horse and he is the word, then to mix it with any kind of a creed to add one to him, it perverts the whole thing. Truth and error. Truth and error cannot mix. It cannot mix. It's either thus saith the Lord or it's wrong. No matter what, Holy Father or St. Boniface or some pastor or some bishop or whoever somewhere else says. Look here. You don't mix it with anything. If it's contrary to the word, it's perversion. It won't mix. Now, Question and answers on the seal. Now listen. The serpent seed. See what the serpent seed done? Antichrist winds up in death, separation, and the red horse. The woman's seed, life ends up on the white horse, Jesus Christ. See what it is? One against the other. The serpent seed against the woman's seed. You get it now? The serpent seed against the woman seed. You get it now? So here we're talking about the whole the white horse. The book of Revelation just opening up and coming to life and we see what God was trying to get across. And he had a prophet on, on the scene to break it down so simply. And that's what it was. It was so simple. He was breaking these great revelations that people just read right across it. Looking for something else. But see, one thing about it. You have to be predestinated to the day and the age in which you live. And once when you are predestinated, you come to this word because you've been predestinated to see it. And you will see it. There's no way, if you are, if your name is on that book, there's no way that you can't see it. I don't care how little, how much you will see it. You will believe it. You will live it. You will be the word made flesh for the day and the hour in which you live. And so he, the armies from heaven come down riding on white horses. The power of the word. And look at if they was coming, the armies, they was coming to do battle between good and evil. The battle of Armageddon. And they think, oh well, this battle is going to be jet plane. Look here. It's between good and evil. It's between Christ and Antichrist. It's between the white horse and the mixed colored horse. It's between. And look at here. God is victorious. Just remember, God is victorious. And how he chooses to do it, that's up to him. All we need to do is stand still and see the glory of God. And He has chosen us before the foundation of the world to be here to stand in the breach. To stand to manifest Christ. And He's got that much confidence in us because He knows we will. We will, we will preach this unadulterated word. We won't mix it with some old stuff from some bygone age and try to get some old school in this. No, we want the pure word of God which we have. And we thank God for it. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you that you've come. Lord, you've come ever which way you said you would. Lord, you've come on that white horse. You've come on the Word. Your name is the Word. You are manifesting the Word. The Word is made flesh. Lord, it is the Word or nothing. And Lord, we declare today that we are that Word. The Word, come to the Word. The Word body, the wife, the body that Christ 
His physical body on this earth, this day, the Word made flesh. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the revelation that you've given this day. And Lord, when you've given it and you back it up and you proclaim it to be the truth. And Lord, everyone that's supposed to hear will hear. They will believe. They will be part of it. And Lord, he said, him that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. So Lord, we thank you that we're safe and secure in Christ the Word. And Lord, we thank you and give you praise and honor and glory that you made us a part of it this day. And we thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Praise.